these people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads! Hoping to get one over on our quiz champions today are ah, the only way is SE. Now, this team of school friends from South East London haven't been quizzing together for long, but are three-time winners of the George Staples pub quiz in Sitka. However, so far, they've failed to answer the £1,000 jackpot question. How annoying! Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Luke, and I'm an apprentice quantity surveyor. Hi, I'm Ali, and I'm an apprentice banker. Hi, I'm George, and I'm an English literature student. Hi, I'm Jawand, and I'm an accounting student. Hi, I'm Jack, and I'm a history and German student. So Luke and team, welcome. Good to see you. Hi. 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 So you, you've known each other a long time. Me and Ali, we've known each other since we were about 10 or so. Okay. And the rest of us, we've known each other since secondary school. And tell us about this place where, where you've started quizzing. Um, so basically, they had some ridiculously high um, prize for it, so we thought mm -hmm. we might as well go and it turned out we're just particularly pretty good at it. To be yeah, honest. good. That's a very good bit of sledging. Start them off on the wrong foot. <laughs> well done. Good luck. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So the only way is Essie. The eggheads have won the last two games. They just get. You can see the steam coming out the top of the train now. So you've got to stop them. It means there's three thousand pounds to play for. Would you like to try? Yes. yes. Excellent. Since you're here, and the first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of arts and books, you can choose between Beth, Chris, Pat, Steve, and Barry. Right. I mean, I'd say to it's probably after you, George. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, I think that's going to be me, Jeremy. George, our English literature student. I can yes. see why you've been oh, chosen. Yeah. <laughs> Which, who would you like to take on? Oh, it's a tough choice. Um, I think I'm going to go with Chris. Okay, so George from the Only Ways SE versus Chris from the Airkeds, please go to our legendary question room. Arts and books, George. What's your favourite kind of reading at the moment? Now you're studying. Oh, I'm, I'm into all sorts of things, um, mostly short stories. Um, I'm quite into Haruki Murakami, um, he's a Japanese writer. Um, yeah, and I like poetry as well. Um, I really love Seamus Heaney, uh, he's one of my favourites. Yeah, brilliant. He is great, Chris. You probably like him as well. Yeah, I like Seamus Heaney, yeah. Good. OK, George, first or second? Um, I'd like to go first, please. And here we go. Down the Rabbit Hole is the title of the first chapter of a classic children's book by which author? A.A. Milne, Lewis Carroll or E. Nesbitt? Oh, no, I'm pretty sure that's from uh, Alice in Wonderland, uh, which would be Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll's quite right. Thank you very much. Nobody ever thanks me when I tell them. <laughs> We've got a very polite team here. You don't thank me, do you, Chris? Give me something to thank you for and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, maybe it's coming. Which female Shakespearean character is given a potion by Friar Lawrence to make her appear dead? Lady Macbeth, Juliet or Beatrice? That's Juliet. Juliet is the right answer. I thought you were going to thank me. <laughs> OK, thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> OK, George, back to you. Which character in an epic poem by the ancient writer Virgil sails to Italy and becomes the founder of the Roman people? Aeneas, Dido, or Pallas? Hmm, OK, I'm not too sure on this one. Um, I think I'm going to go for the first one, Aeneas. Aeneas is right. Yeah, really good. Was that just a guess, or was that um, something... I was fairly sure, but I wasn't 100% confident. It's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> OK, Chris on the back foot a little bit here. Chris, your question. Which of these books is set mainly at Craig Lockhart War Hospital in Scotland? Birdsong, War Horse, or Regeneration? Interesting. Uh, well, it's not War Horse, because I suppose it's set on the Western Front. Uh, is it Regeneration or is it Birdsong? I've not read either, but I think the one that's set at Craig Lockhart is uh, Regeneration. Regeneration's right. Well done. You're both playing well. George, the Renaissance painter Giorgione lived and worked mainly in which city? Rome, Venice or Florence? Okay, well, um, 
I think all these cities have had very famous uh, painters throughout the ages. Um, I think perhaps the one most well known for famous artists is Florence. So just on that logic, I'm going to go with Florence. Venice is the answer, George. Ah, okay. Chris, your chance to get the round here. Answer books. For what does the letter M stand in the name of the American crime novelist James M. Kane? Malahan, Macarius, or Mordecai? I don't have a clue, Jeremy. Uh, is he Irish or is he Jewish? If he's Jewish, the Jewish name there is Mordecai, so that's what I'll have to go with. No, it's Malahan. So, Chris, two out of three for you as well. Bit of a let off there, George. <laughs> How about that? We go to sudden death, though, so it gets a, a little bit more tricky. I don't give you alternative answers. Are you ready? Yes. Which Irish writer described the two moons of Mars, Phobos, and Deimos quite accurately more than a hundred years before either moon was discovered? Oh, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, I'm struggling to think of anyone who it could be, I'm afraid. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to pass, I'm afraid. I'm not sure. Okay. Chris, do you know? Uh, sounds like it ought to be Jonathan Swift. Yeah, Jonathan Swift. Uh, Gulliver's Travels. So Chris has a chance to take the round. Don't worry, George, you're not out yet. Which Italian chemist wrote If This Is A Man about his experiences inside Auschwitz concentration camp? Primo Levi. Primo Levi is the right answer, Chris. You've taken the round on sudden death. Sorry, George. You've been knocked out by our egghead here. He'll be in the final. And you won't. Please come back, rejoin your teams. We'll see what happens next. So, the only way is SE have lost a brain. We hope that that is not catastrophic. Bad luck, George. The egghead's are still sitting pretty there. The next subject is geography. Okay, do we have a geographer? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, well, yeah. Is that you? That, I'm not like an actual geographer. No, no, no. <laughs> You're a quantity surveyor. Yeah. <laughs> but you do a bit of geography on the side. Uh, yeah, it's something that's always interested me. So. Brilliant. Okay, well, that's a great start. Who would you like to take on? Can't be Chris. Um, not Barry. Yeah, I'm going to have to melt from Barry a bit. Um, You're avoiding Barry. Yeah. yeah. Well, he has been to every answer. That's his, uh, his claim to um, fame. I'll take Steve. Good call. Okay, so Luke from the Only Ways SE versus Steve from the Eggheads. Please, both of you, go to our question room now. Good luck, Luke. Thanks. Team captain going in. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a bit worried by this? Uh, not really. It's okay. Bad. That's good. And I should say, your, your team name is based on the, the show The Only Way is Essex. Yeah, it's just because it works for a pun. We don't actually watch that. Oh, did, did Steve, <laughs> do you watch it? Because I can never find anyone who actually admits to watching it, but I, I know lots of people do. Life's too short. Mm. Or my life is, anyway. <laughs> All right, geography, Luke. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, second, please. Steve, your first question. What is the capital of the Caribbean island of Barbados? Port of Spain? Kingston or Bridgetown? Yeah, it's Bridgetown, Jeremy. So Kingston is Jamaica. Yeah. Port, Port of Spain. Spain. Trinidad. Tobago. Trinidad. Okay. Bridgetown's right. Luke, your question. Which of these Australian cities is furthest north? Sydney, Darwin, or Melbourne? Um. So I know Melbourne's right in the south. Sydney, I think, is really far in the south. So I think I've got a feeling that Darwin. You know, like the bit in Australia, it's going to sound stupid, but the bit where it like points up at the top and goes near Papua New Guinea. I think that's where Darwin is. I might be thinking of somewhere else, but I'm going to say Darwin. Yes, Darwin is right. Well done, because that could easily have gone wrong. Steve, which US state has the highest population density according to the US census? Steve, is it New Jersey, New Mexico, or New Hampshire? I think that one's New Jersey, Jeremy. New Jersey is the right answer. Okay, your question, Luke. Keep the pressure on him here. Yeah. With which of these countries does Switzerland share its longest border? France, Italy, or Liechtenstein? Uh, well, it's definitely not Liechtenstein. Um, I've been from Italy on a coach to Britain, and we went through Switzerland. And I feel like Switzerland's border with France isn't that long, and I think Italy's, because Switzerland's more like long than it's tall. So I've got a feeling it's Italy. You're really good, well done. Italy it is. Thank Playing you. well. 
Steve, the Kuna is the main currency of which country? That's K-U-N-A. Slovenia, Montenegro, or Croatia? Yeah, I think somewhere along the way it might be derived from Crown, unless that's Karuna, but anyway, I think it's Croatia, Jeremy. Well, you're making swift work of these questions today. Croatia's right. You've got three out of three. So, Luke, this is the moment. Get this right, take him to sudden death. He may just... the circuits may break. Okay. Here we go. The feature known as Scarborough Shoal lies in which body of water? South China Sea, Sea of Japan, or Bering Sea? Um, well, I was hoping it would be like North Sea or something. Um, well, I've got a feeling, because I know that Hong Kong and Shanghai, they're on the southeastern part of China, and there's a lot of things in Shanghai, I remember we learned about it in school, where it's like pretty much like London, or it was anyway, I don't know if it still is, and Hong Kong obviously used to be a British colony, and I've got a feeling that would make it the South China Sea, but I'm not sure. What do you think, Steve? I really don't know, Jeremy, but it's a very plausible answer. It's a lovely answer. What eggs is yeah, right? Right, it's one of those little groups of rocks that are the subject of lots of disputes, territorial disputes. Yeah, Pat confirms you are right, Lou. <laughs> and and the logic was just perfect. So we go to sudden death. Gets a bit harder. Start with you, Steve. I don't give you alternative answers. Which Asian city was previously known as Akmola and is now the capital of Kazakhstan? Astana. Astana is the right answer. I know you love your capitals, you eggheads. All right, now there's pressure here, Luke. EAU is which country's international vehicle registration code? Um, well, obviously it's an anagram of UAE, but then United Arab Emirates sort of seems too obvious. That's the reason why I'm not sort of, I don't really want to lean towards it. I've really not got any idea, so I'm going to have to say Egypt, but yeah. I don't think that's right. So your answer is? Egypt. Egypt. Any air kids now? Is it Uganda? East Africa? Yeah, Pat, Pat. East Africa, Uganda is what it stands for. Sorry, Luke. Well done, Steve. You squeaked him. And you came very close there, Luke. Sorry about that, but uh, great play. Come back to us. We'll play on. So as it stands, the only way is SE have lost two brains from the final round, despite, may I say, just brilliant play there, Luke, in geography. The eggheads have not lost a brain yet. The next subject is music. Who wants music? I, I, I don't think I should do music. No, I do. Okay, I'll do it. Are you sure? I respect that, Ali. Ali? Take on 15. Okay, apprentice banker against which quizzer? It could be Pat or Beth or Barry. I enjoy trying to take on Barry for the generation. Yeah. Everyone agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. go for Barry. Okay, Ali from The Only Way is SE versus Barry from The Only Way is Lee. See? <laughs> no, not Essie. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the only way is that we've got to practice our yeah. lines, Barry. <laughs> to ensure there's no comparing, please take your positions in the question room. Okay, Ali, you're against the great Barry, known as the brain, on music. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'd like to go first, please. Good luck, and here we go, Ali. The marimba most closely resembles which of these percussion instruments? Xylophone, tambourine, or bongos? Hmm, I haven't heard of it before. My music teacher didn't do a good job on this one. I'll hazard a guess at bongos. Bongos. Actually, you strike it to play a note, the marimba, so it's more like the xylophone. Xylophone is correct. Barry, your question. When you believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. A lines from which Stevie Wonder song? Higher ground, happy birthday, or superstition? Gosh, I would have preferred the marimba question. <laughs> when you believe in things, then you must suffer. Well, it doesn't sound like happy birthday. Is it? I mean, I've heard superstition many times, and I can't recall that line, but uh, the tenor of that line sounds very much as it came like superstition. So, though I've heard superstition many times and I can't remember it, I'm going to go for superstition. If Lisa was here, I would ask her to do it, but it's, it's when you believe in things you don't understand, then you suffer. Superstition gets you down. But you're right, Barry, that's the main thing. It would be an odd line to have in Happy Birthday. Yeah, it would indeed. <laughs> All right, he's pulled ahead, Ali. The year 2016 was the 20th anniversary of the debut album by which group? Take That, Spice Girls, or Westlife? I've 
wanted to let him take that more recently than the other two. I'll have to go with the process of elimination, so I don't think it's Westlife purely because I haven't heard their name crop up much. I'm going to go with take that, Jeremy. Would you have gone take that, Barry? Yes, I would. So would I, but it's the Spice Girls. Wow. Oh, gosh. Okay. <sighs> Barry Simmons, you have a chance to take the round with just this question. Who composed the music for The Goodbye Girl, the stage musical based on the 1977 film of the same name? Leonard Bernstein, Marvin Hamlish, or Aaron Copeland? Well, I liked, enjoyed the film very much. I think Richard Dreyfus was in it. It was a wonderful film. But I can't but it will be Aaron Copeland because he was classical. And I don't think I don't think it could possibly be Leonard Bernstein, who probably wasn't composing by that time. So I'll have to go for Marvin Hamlish. If you've got this right, Barry, you've taken the rounds. Marvin Hamish is the right answer. Well done, Barry. Placed in the final. Two out of two. Sorry, Ali. You've been knocked out. It's not quite a crisis for our challengers, but it's getting close. Return to us. We'll play the last round before the all-important final. So the only way is SC have lost three brains from the final round. The A-Kids, it's still in one piece. And the next subject is sport. Now, is this good news? Reasonably good news. Reasonably, so is it Jawand or Jack? Uh, I think I'll go for yeah. Jawand. Okay, Jawand, against which egghead? And it can be either Beth or Pat. You know, I don't really know who's stronger. It's, it's, it's just, just yeah. top top really. Just exactly. sure. yeah, just Beth. Right, I'll go with Beth, please. Okay, so Jawand from the Only Ways SE, playing Beth at Sport from the eggheads. And please, for the last time, go to our question room. So, Jawand, you can choose whether you go first or second on Sport. Um, I'll go second, please. Here we go, Beth, with your first question on sport. Who did Andy Murray defeat to win the gold medal in the men's singles at the 2016 Olympics? Was it Stan Wawrinka, Juan Martin Del Potro, or Novak Djokovic? I... It wasn't... I was absolutely addicted to the Olympics, but this was one match that actually passed me by, but I'm pretty sure it was Juan Martin Del Potro. Juan Martin Del Potro is the right answer. Well done. OK, your first question now. Joanne, good luck. Which of these terms means the recorded times for intervals of an athletics race? Cuts, breaks, or splits? Um, the answer is splits. Splits is right. Back to you, Beth. Tofik Bakramov from Azerbaijan played an important part in which of these sporting events? The 2012 Tour de France, the 1981 Ashes series, or the 1966 World Cup final? Well, that sounds like an incredibly Russian name, even though he's from Kazakhstan, um, sorry. Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan, sorry. Um, I wonder whether he was the Russian linesman in the 66 World Cup. So that was going to be my answer. 1966 World Cup final. Let's see, I can see the lads nodding here. We've got the thumbs up from Steve. Yes, Beth, well done. Do you want? In 1981, the American Bob Tway turned professional in which sport? Golf, boxing, or figure skating? How? I've, I've never heard of that name, to be honest. Uh, Bob Tway. Um, don't think it's figure skating. I'll go with golf. Golf is correct. Playing well. Two out of two. Over to you, Beth. Which Pakistani batsman became his country's highest test match scorer in 2015? Yunus Khan, Misbah ul Haq, or Mohammed Hafiz? It's going, to be a, it's going to have to be a one in three guess. For, for no reason that I'm not sure whether he plays so much anymore, so Eunice Khan will be out. So it's between the other two, both of whom I believe are still playing. Ms. Barrel Hack. Ms. Barrel Hack is your answer. Let's just go to Ali here because I know your, your family originally from Pakistan, yeah? Yes. Yeah. And you know this? Uh, yeah, Yunus Khan would have been like, he's still playing, and I think if we're talking about all-time leading death scorers, then it's Yunus Khan. Yeah, Yunus Khan is the answer, Beth. Confirmed by Ali here. So, Joanne, do you have a chance to take the round and get into the final? The Charlotte Hornets are a team in which US sport? American football, basketball, or baseball? That doesn't sound like a... A basketball team. So I'm going to rule that out. I, I, know, I know Jack's a fan of US basketball, so if it was basketball, he'd probably like give me a beating. 
think I'm I think I'm gonna go for baseball. Okay, you've inflicted a bit of pain here on your side. Jack, do you want to tell him? I mean it's a basketball team. It is basketball. <laughs> oh dear. That was your question, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. So equal <sighs> after three we go to sudden death. I don't give you choices here. Your question, Beth. At the Australian Swimming Championships in 2004, which swimmer was disqualified after he overbalanced on the blocks in the heats of the 400 metres freestyle, thus putting his Olympic place in jeopardy? Ooh, so that could be one of two. One of the two would be out because he was American, so I'm going to go with the Australian, which is Ian Thorpe. Ian Thorpe is right. So pressure on you now, Joanne. Beth ahead, sudden death. It could all end now. The Soviet competitor Larissa Latnina was a leading name in which sport? So that's obviously something that's been around for a while. Um, I'm not too sure about what Soviet Union were particularly good at in the past. Um, however, something's telling me that it's fencing. Fencing, if true, that would be a brilliant, brilliant shout. It's not, I'm afraid. It's gymnastics. Gymnastics. So, Larissa was a gymnast, and that means you are out of the final round, Joanne. I'm sorry. So, the challenges will be down to one. Well done, Beth. You're in the final. Come back to us, and we will play that final round. So, this is what we have been playing towards. It is time for our final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, I'm afraid all from this side, it's Luke and Ali and George and Joanne from the Only Ways SE. Would you please now leave the studio? Okay, Jack, here we are. Now, the, the last big question you answered was for 1,000 at the pub, and this time it's for 3,000. Yeah. So, are you up for it? I'm very up for it. I'm sorry the tactics haven't quite worked yeah. out, but you can still win, can't he? We know this. Yes, you certainly can. So, Barry, Steve, Pat, Chris, Beth, you're playing for something invaluable, which is the Egghead's reputation still a little bit shaky. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. They're all general knowledge. You can confer. I'm sorry that doesn't help you, Jack. The question is, can you, with your one brain, defeat these five? And it's been done before. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'll go first, please, Jeremy. <laughs> Here we go, Jack. In which city would you be most likely to travel on the underground system called the U-Bahn? Berlin, Rome, or Paris? Um, well, I'm a, Ger I'm a German student. I'm pretty sure that the answer is Berlin. Berlin is right. You are studying what, German and something else? History. History. Okay. We'll hope for a history question next. Yeah. Okay. Berlin is the right answer. Well done. Hey, kids. Which popular breed of cat is particularly known for its lack of a tail? Persian, Manx, or Siamese? Manx. Manx. Uh, we think that's a Manx cat. It is a Manx cat. I don't know how you know this stuff. Okay, Jack. The 2016 book Porcelain is the memoir of which DJ and musician? Moby, Fatboy Slim, or David Guetta? I, I can't think of any link to any of... I mean, I don't know a lot about any of the DJs anyway. I can't think of a link to them. Um, I'll go for Moby. I'm not sure why, but um, yeah. Eggheads? Moby had a song called Porcelain. Moby, Moby yeah. yeah, Moby had a song called Porcelain. So Moby's right? Bit of luck. Oh, yeah, you mm -hmm. can do with luck here. That's good. Eggheads, I could, I, my desk slightly trembled. I think it's them. They just sense the danger. The name of which type of pasta literally means wheels? Is it rigatoni? Riccioli or ruote? Rigatoni. I thought it was rigatoni. Really? No, no, it's not rigatoni. Rigatoni is like two. Rigatoni. Rigatoni. Rigatoni sounds like rotary. Rotary sounds like rotary. Rotary sounds like How it's written, it's saying rotary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that would be rotary way of thinking as well, yes. We're not sure at all of this, but we're going to go with ruote. Ruote is sadly right. <laughs> okay, Jack, get this right, and who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. What type of insect is the parasitic gadfly or horsefly? Is it blowfly, botfly, or fruitfly? Um, I don't know again. Um, I can't, I mean, I can't think of any link. 
I'm sure there is one. Um, I'll go for bot fly, please, Jeremy. Is he right? I think it's a blowfly. Yeah, a big one. very, very painful bites from horse flies. So you say blowfly? I am saying blowfly. Okay. The answer is bot fly. Well, well done. Thank you. Fly. You got it. <laughs> well, that was I, that. I don't know what yeah. they were. Yeah. They're thinking they're the eggs. Who knows? You may not have to do any more work today. Oh, no, 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 You've done your bit yeah, for the yeah. team. What about that team? You got three out of three. <laughs> okay. Eggheads. Game on. Born in Canada in the late 1970s, Erdem Moralioglu is a well-known name in which field? Is this architecture, photography, or fashion design? It's not that well, Erdem Moralioglu is a, is a fashion designer. It's down to you then, Beth. Designer? Fashion designer. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we've had guidance from Beth here, and we're going with fashion designer. A lot riding on this. Beth is right. Oh, Fashion man. design. Oh, okay. The new egghead coming up trumps there. So equal after three. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Jack. Right on the uh, verge. For a second. I for a yeah. second. Now we get a sudden death. Which star of the TV series Downton Abbey was nominated for an Oscar for her performance in the 1981 film Ragtime? I'm thinking 1981. I've seen quite a lot of the cast is quite young. The, I can't think of a name. The woman who plays the like. The uh, like the grandmother and like, the or the mother of the main like the main the main guy. I think her name's Maggie Smith, but that's uh, that might be wrong. But I'd I'd guess Maggie Smith. Cause I know she's in Downton Abbey. You've remembered correctly an actor, Maggie Smith, but it's Elizabeth McGovern right. who plays Lady Grantham. <sighs> hey kids, if you get this right, the contest is over. Sudden death we're on. Which actor played the title character Derek Flint? in the spoof spy films, Our Man Flint and In Light Flint. It's Coburn, isn't it? Yes. We think that's James Coburn. If you've got this right, the contest is over. Our Man Flint was indeed James Coburn. We say congratulations, Eggheads, you have won. You could have done no more. Yeah, you got yeah. three right. Three right is often enough but then it's Harbin as five of them as well. So commiserations. Thank you. I hope you've had a good time. You've made a long trip up to Glasgow here. Yeah, yeah. Good experience. Yeah, it's fun, nervous. And now you can go to the pub and win the thousand pounds. Exactly. It's yeah. going to be a cinch after this. The eggheads have done what comes naturally to them. You still reign supreme over Quizland. It does mean that the challenges don't go home with the three thousand pounds. So we take the money and we roll it over to our next show. Eggheads, well done. I wonder if this money will ever be won. <laughs> Just trying to jinx it. Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads. There's four thousand pounds for them to play for. Till then, goodbye.